Hello, everybody. I am coming to you from my living room in North Asheville, and I have Tara McCracken here, who is the uh, Director, Western District of Workforce Development for Goodwill of Western, Northwestern North Carolina, and Pamela <laughs> Wright with Spark Foundation. Right. And so we're uh, meeting to on, on Zoom to find out what both of these important organizations are doing uh, to help uh, with the crisis situation that we're in in the community. So Pamela, I'll start with you. Uh, tell them what Spark is about, but also tell them what you're doing uh, with the church. Right, okay. Um, well, I do work with um, handling communications for the Spark Foundation, and I am the board chair this year for Haywood Street. Um, so Haywood Street really focuses on um, our friends in the community, our homeless friends, our, and Spark works to ignite connections, be it education, employment, mentorship, for individuals and families in need. Many um, having had some interaction with the criminal justice system, trying to keep children out of foster care, get them out of foster care, keeping people out of institutional care um, is the main bridge there. So it's two very different communities, but definitely human services don't decrease during a national crisis, that is for sure. Um, often the resources, however, can decrease. So that is where so many um, groups and people in such a beautiful and powerful way that I know will never be undone have come together through what is going on right now. So the, the support system um, is just getting more creative, that's for sure. And well, I know tell, us, tell us what's yeah. going on then. Um, okay, well, one of our biggest uh, programs with Spark is working with families, um, and it's family-centered treatment where our clinicians, clinicians go into the home working with the entire family, and sometimes they're there two to three times a week. So needless to say, that's not happening um, in that way. So our team, you know, through just their own ingenuity, was able to rework the programs, uh, still being able to offer services and doing so digitally, leading to actually more contact, more frequent and shorter contacts and so many benefits that they're seeing with that um, and being able to work with people. We have a peer support group that has been able to get involved as well. So we're actually in more contact with people in that way. Um, so that has been some real, you know, positives to say to come out that our clinicians are saying, we would never go back now to just these massive in-person visits. There's no reason, you know, not to have this more frequent contact. So that has been really good. And again, like I said, we were able to do that of our own volition. Now, other parts of, of our program required legislative changes even for us to be able to provide a service. So our team that offers um, offender services to for the safety of family members where there has been domestic violence, that took a lot more work and to reconfigure that program in order to stay in touch with people, for people to, um, you know, even have a safe and private place to have these meetings. The director of our program, uh, luckily, is a licensed therapist as well. So she's been able to bring in a whole different piece because so much of these offender services, of course, are, you know, teaching people new ways but also, you know, a lot of accountability pieces and conversations that can be very triggering. And when all of a sudden you're having these while people are still in the home, the survivors, you know, still living with the abuser, that's not something that you necessarily want to handle that way. So she's been able to rework that program, get things approved legislatively. So there's been a bit of a transition from, again, these uh, 
you know, hate to say this, you know, almost like in your face kind of teaching programs to something that is also teaching more coping skills and support again in, you know, all working to protect the people that are living in the homes and these relationships that are trying to be healed. So it's been very interesting to see those different dynamics that some really require, you know, getting state approved, you know, to approve these new ways and others we've been to just get scrappy and get creative and make things happen. So did, did this uh, legislation to approve these, did that happen like just recently during yes. the so shutdown? Yes, so within okay. the last eight, nine days, we were yeah. able to get that. And of course, our you know team and case managers were staying in touch with um, our, you know, the people we work with, with our clients, with their families as well before that. But now things have really been able to um, pick back up and we're able to still get referrals from social workers. Um, you know, where there are victims, their options have gotten smaller as far as if they wanted to leave the home because so many shelters for everyone's safety have had to lock their doors already. If you're in, you're in. Yeah. If you're not, you're not. So us being able now to provide these services, just like all mental health services as well, um, you know, fast tracking that telehealth and things that need to be done. Okay, and so how can people find out what all services uh, you're offering? Give us okay. give us some information, contact information, and okay. uh, and uh, let people use Great. that as they need to. Okay, um, it is the Spark foundation.org and it's S-P-A-R-C um, and something that has always been a part of our program that again you know was for a specific part of the community but now is more open to the public are the coordinations that we do with Mana Food Bank with community food markets so mm -hmm. we're going into different neighborhoods um, you know many that have been considered food deserts and you don't have to provide you know any information or live in a particular neighborhood these are now open to the public and are being offered uh, you know with social distancing in mind physical safe distancing and those types of things again we're just be, being able to broaden who can benefit, you know, many of us that didn't necessarily think these were services that we might need, um, now able to realize how close many of us are to that, that edge, so to speak, mm -hmm. and really doing this with a community spirit and the fact that everybody's going through this in one way or another. People that are not, you know, still near that edge and all the privilege that comes with it really have chances to get involved, you know, in a monetary way, um, all sorts of, of different services, but uh, the sparkfoundation.org, we're doing a lot through the One Buncom Fund, you know, trying to just get as much out of everybody's contributions as possible. So what silver cloud or silver lining are you seeing because of this situation that we're in, which is really unprecedented, I don't think any of us have ever been in this situation or anything even close to it before. Right. Um, I think, you know, in the, in the good and bad way, ripping off a lot of the disparities and um, just opening so many people's eyes to, and again, conversations that hadn't been taking place or, you know, some people had the luxuries of the conversations not taking place, um, are taking places. And a big, beautiful piece has been within our families that we work with or within our own families, children with special needs, um, finding just ways that, that, that our children are connecting to things that are very helpful that actually in person didn't really benefit them that much. You know, you take away some of those sensory pieces that can be barriers and it just feels like a new world is opening up for the way people will be able to be reached. And that is not to try to, 
you know, you're asking for the silver lining, um, which is great, which keeps us going on a daily basis, but it's like not being Pollyanna-ish about it. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's laying bare just how great some needs are that are, that are not, these are not luxuries. Right, right. Well, let's go to Tara. Tara, mm -hmm. can you uh, come in? You've got, you're, you're uh, with Goodwill Industries mm -hmm. of Western North Carolina. And I know you have the inside information on a lot of other organizations and help that's available to the community. Go ahead mm -hmm. and tell our listeners some of that and, and our viewers on, on Facebook. Yeah, so um, much like what Pamela said, you know, we, Spark remains committed to their mission and to how they serve the community and Goodwill was the same. So uh, just like everyone else transitioned to, oh my gosh, how do we do this virtually? We also transitioned to, oh my gosh, how do we provide these services and still continue to support um, our, our programs uh, participants, the people who who still need us. And we know even now, um, if people have people have been laid off, people are still looking for work, but people still need services and support and people to talk to, probably now more than they needed it, you know, two months ago. So we really sort of sprung into action and, and sprung quickly, trying to figure out which groups can work from home, how will we connect with with participants and how do we stay connected to our community? That's of course, um, you know, Buncombe County specifically, Western North Carolina has such a strong and amazing community and people still want to engage. And I think that that was also on the top of our list, not just the individuals who need us, but how do we stay connected with Spark? How do we stay connected with our employment agencies, with the chamber? We need to, to continue to know what's going on. We need to know about One Buncombe and how to support our small businesses and, and things like that, because that's what makes us unique. So that was sort of our approach going into it. Um, it. It was swift as it was for all of us. It was a, a quick, quick decisions and, and things happened so fast. And we were really able to kind of push out two things that supported the community or at least gave us more access to people who might need services. And that was our Goodwill Cares initiative, which um, just allows people to find out more about our programs quickly and get in contact with our staff quickly. So people can go to our website, click Goodwill Cares and fill out quick information. And then that's immediately sent to staff members who can assist them. And so just kind of lessening that barrier between us and our staff members since we are us and our participants since we can't see them in person right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that was sort of our first initiative. Uh, we also started pushing out additional uh, webinars and trainings trying to get people um, engaged right now. You know, if we we're at home, there's a lot of stress going on, but there's also great opportunity in that, you know, figuring out how the workforce is changing and what can we be doing now to figure out what we want to do in the future and, and how our dream may shift for six months, but that's okay. You know, once we, I think once we get past that initial shock and, you know, devastation, there's, there's positive things that we can focus on. So we've done some Indeed resume uh, webinars. We have really upped our training offerings and um, our other communication pieces on our Goodwill on the Go website. Um, so we're just trying to continue to engage and try to show something positive um, because this is this was a lot of quick change for all of our families and uh, no one could be prepared for that. So really trying to figure out what sort of this virtual services world looks like and how do we continue to to support and, and provide resources when needed. Well, it certainly is an opportunity for all of us to rise to the challenge of thinking outside the box yeah. and coming up with using technology yeah. to uh, be able to connect with people and offer services that imagine if this happened 20 years ago, you wouldn't be able to make the connections that we're mm -hmm. making now right. and informing people of what's available in the community. So, yeah. you know, um, Certainly technology is a double-edged sword. I happen to love technology, but a lot of people find it very difficult. But in this, in this case, I can see uh, with both of, both of you that technology mm -hmm. is playing a really big, big part of helping connect people and inform them of what's available. So yeah. uh, uh, on WPVM's um, 
Facebook page, we'll be putting up the um, information for, for Goodwill Cares. And also, I'm sure that uh, Spark has something mm -hmm. too that they're running on social media mm -hmm. uh, that we can help share. Mm -hmm. um, um, anything either one of you want to uh, add to this conversation? Well, I would just say um, as far as the homelessness initiative group that's been, you know, working mm -hmm. together with the emergency management for the city and for the county, um, mm -hmm. one, you know, one of the earliest biggest requests was hand washing stations around mm -hmm. town and mm -hmm. hand sanitizing stations. And that was something we were able to, you know, get the request in and, and get those out. Um, they are positioned in mm -hmm. different spots around town, lots downtown at Haywood Street. Um, Belid is just all over the streets helping to keep things um, filled up and keeping people fed. I mean, for 10 yeah. years, Haywood Street's entire mission is relationship above all else is mm -hmm. gathering around tables to eat together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that has transitioned to feeding, you know, 400 people three times a week out in a parking lot in boxes like whatever we can do to keep it yeah. going mm -hmm. as well as supplying meals to the civic center we're now 50 they're trying to get it up to 60 people are being housed and um at haywood street there's a respite where um usually you know if someone is unhoused comes out of the hospital needs a place to recover mm -hmm. but they stay for two weeks well, that is, is now transitioning to long-term shelter for nine friends, um, which we just, a few minutes ago, found out that everyone has tested negative, so they will be able to be housed together. Um, now, and they're going in tomorrow, and we don't know when this will end. But again, being able to transition in that way to provide some uh, temporary housing, quarantined housing, and there's a meal train for that. Um, Haywoodstreet.org. If you know if cooking is your love language, <laughs> then that is something that the community can do because that's I, I know what's hurting so many people that are doers is mm -hmm. that it's just not a whole lot of do. Um, yeah, that was going to be the first yeah. question I asked you was how can this community help support Spark? Mm -hmm. in these endeavors to help people who are very vulnerable. Right. And at this point in this crisis, mm -hmm. um, financial, you know, giving is just yep. means so much more than ever. Um, gift cards, you know, those type of tangible daily things um, just mean more than ever. One of our case managers, Tony Shivers, he volunteered with the, uh, you know, Christian Rescue Mission Services, and he volunteered with them anyway, and has chosen to be quarantined there with everyone. He works for Spark, but he's literally being able to give us information on the inside of what people need, because there are people in there that had to make a choice. Do I keep with my job at the grocery store? you know, used to could work at the grocery store and then sleep somewhere at night. No, you had to make a choice to become quarantined for safety reasons mm -hmm. and lose that job. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, kind of half went one way that now where they're staying is an issue, mm -hmm. uh, but they wanted to keep their job and the others, you know, chose this. So, I mean, it's just choices that are having to be made mm -hmm. that are shocking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, right. uh, so Tara, tell us um, uh, if you want to end with anything and tell us how people can assist goodwill of Western North Carolina. Yeah, I think, you know, this is, these are all non-traditional ways to serve and to connect. And like Pamela mentioned, these are choices that are not even in our realm of possibility or weren't in our options, you know, two months ago. So making these choices quickly. And, and I think we're seeing all of the agencies and the organizations coming together and still trying to serve in non-traditional ways. And I think if people, you know, if they need help and they didn't, they 
didn't need our help maybe three months ago and now they need some support, whatever that looks like, you know, we're all still here. It might take a minute for you to get in touch with us. Give us a call. We'll find somebody. They'll call you back, but we're still here. And, and I think there's a lot to be learned from this non-traditional way of serving. Um, you know, Pamela mentioned there's some great things coming out of the way that they're connecting with folks and we're the same. You know, we, we teach inside uh, prison facilities. Obviously, we can't do that right now. But DPS is working really closely with us for us to still connect with our folks who are maybe being released. And so we're still able to, again, be non-traditional in how we're working with individuals. So I would just say, you know, for people who, who need help or, or want to help, just reach out. Um, obviously, the, the One Buncombe Fund is wonderful. There's a lot of great resources on the helping side on the Chamber of Commerce website. Um, Goodwill specific masks. I wish I masks. Not a so. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I can't do that either. But I know that there's people out there who can. Um, yeah. So masks. We we assume we can assume. I guess that that's going to be something that'll stick around with us for a while. So we have to look uh, snazzy wearing our masks. You know, this is Asheville. We can't wear non snazzy masks. Uh, but I think reach out and you know our currently our Goodwill stores are closed um, and. You know, that was a challenge for us, but that's a safety concern. Mm -hmm. um, our donations are, are limited right now as well. We get a lot of calls about people wanting to donate, which is awesome. So I think our message would be, you know, if you can hold on to your stuff, hold on to it until we can bring staff back to really be able to process that and process it safely. Um, and maybe in the meantime, there's, again, there's a lot of other places that, um, may need some cooking assistance or mm -hmm. a monetary donation. And we know that the reason we love Western North Carolina is because of our community and our services and, and the local uh, amazing industry that we have here. So I think figuring out ways to support that so it can come back and thrive um, in the next few months would be, that's, that's kind of where we're focusing at this point. So uh, people can contact uh, both of you, given the information that we've given. I want to thank Pamela Wright with Spark and Tara McCracken with Goodwill of Western North Carolina. And we'll have information on both our website, on WPBM's website at wpbmfm.org, and on our Facebook social media page at WPBM. We'll have inform contact information there. And thank you, ladies, very much. And thank you so much for what you're doing in the community. Thank you're, you so you're, much. You're, it, thank you. This is, you're a better angel. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's really nice to see you in Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>